boy George Ruiz here, Alex Kudo Tibet, and today on Plug, I have the pleasure of having my boy Luke Chell the drummer. Yeah, my brother. Appreciate you, Nego. Thank you for having me, man. I really do appreciate that, my brother. We had we had Patterson in the building, you know, Tuffy and T. Twelve, what up, boy? Ah, so let's let's talk about you know this this drummer life. How did you start? Where did it come from? Right. Uh, I started drumming. Originally, my father bought me a drum set. Okay. Yeah, you know I mean, when I was like four, at my grandmother's house on the East Thirty First in Patterson. So I was always drumming, making noise, annoying everybody, beating on my grandmother's pots and pans. <laughs> my, my cousins and everybody is like, "Yo, somebody hide the sticks." True story. They hid my sticks one time because they didn't want me to, you know, keep drumming. Keep making the noise. Nice. Yeah. So I went out in my grandmother's backyard and broke off like tree branches. Ooh. And went downstairs and started drumming with those, you know what I mean? So, started drumming when I was young, moved to Arizona, something a lot of people don't know. Arizona? Yeah. Why Arizona? Uh, my mother didn't want me and my little sister to grow up, you know, in Patterson. You know, nothing against it, that's my home, but she wanted to try to afford me and my little sister uh, certain opportunities. Okay. Um, you know, get us different experiences, man. Growing up in a little town called Sierra Vista, 520, what up? Uh, it's real, it's different, man. It's country. <laughs> it's country, man. Like, I grew up in Arizona, fifth grade through, I came back to Jersey 2001. So, you could say from like age nine to like 14. Okay, so that's a, that's a good portion. Yeah, so that's that's a lot of what makes you. You go through a lot of different things. You know, when you're a young boy, teenage boy, there's a lot you go through. Yes, there are a lot of things. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. So growing up out there, it was different, but it's it's the same like every other hood. You know, we had trailer parks. You know, out here we got the projects. We got the towers and everything like that. So, you know. But um, being out there, I was drumming in the church as, you know, a lot of self-taught drummers, you know, because I can't read music. I'm learning how to read. Everything I've done up to this point is just off the straight ear. I, yeah, straight ear. If I hear it, I can play it. I don't care what it is. Rock, gospel, Latin, hip-hop, bluegrass, jazz, like... You hear, you play. Yeah, just give it to me. Let me dissect that and I'm on it. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, came back out here, didn't really mess with the drums, honestly, for like a good eight years. Wow, like, why, why, why that gap? Sports. Everything was basketball, football, track in high school. Um, came out, high school was playing uh, semi-pro football, was just running around playing the men's leagues, basketball. So I wasn't really thinking about the drums. You know, a lot of times when we're young, we take things for granted. We don't realize certain gifts that we have. Listen, and, and I know. agree with you because, you know, when I was in eighth, eighth grade, no, when I was in fourth grade, I used to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got to high school, you know, it was kind of like, I'm, I'm too cool for guitar. And right. that's probably like one of the biggest regrets that I have that I didn't learn how to play this instrument and I feel like it's such a gift, you know, to yeah. kind of, you know, know how to use it. It is, man. It's, you know how many people wish that they could play an instrument? You know how many athletes wish they had, like, musical talents? Yeah. You know, and I'm blessed to have both. Like, I was I was good with my sports and I'm pretty dope with the music, you know what I mean, with the drumming and everything, so it's a blessing. So, uh, boom, fast forward, fast forward, somehow... Part of me got wrapped back up in uh in the church it was always a blessing. Somehow, you know, yes. God always bring you back to him somehow, some way. And then one day I got a phone call from my homie Marcus Troy, um, representing Foxhound, you feel what I'm saying? He called me up like, yo, Cheo, man, I got some some things we're doing with the music, man. I need a drum. I want you to come, you know what I mean? So boom, made that happen. That's my man's. We did some shows, made some things happen. Um, he kinda Fell back from the music. Now he's a fighter, fighter, which is like super dope. Respect yeah, that man yeah, for, for sure. saving lives and all that. Like that's real dope. He's still writing all that. He's still nasty with the pen. Yeah, you know I mean, you never know. We might see us together again. And then, uh, boom, my boy Twelve calls me. Tell and T. And for like the last two and a half, three years, that's everything has been. So I still do. You know, I got a few rock groups I work with. I did like a little Latin um, percussion thing. I don't know if you know the drummer um, Ray Barreto. Not enough. Like, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, he's a uh, Congo player, played for like Tito Fuentes and everybody. Oh, back okay. In the day. Whoa. Yeah, he's real dope. Like you could YouTube his music and everything. Well, I had the dope opportunity to drum for his son oh, for that's two fire. years. Yeah, for like a, um, it's called Legacy Minded Men, which is like a gospel Christian ministry. Um, do they do like uh men's uh conventions and workshops and everything? So we travel all over New Jersey and 
and get to drum and do that. So it's like God always has me doing different things. Like, you know, they say his, your, your gifts will make room for you. So somehow, some way, I always come back to drumming. So eventually I finally realized, you know, like, maybe this is my purpose. This is what I need to be doing. I done had hand surgery, broke my hand, back surgery, you know what I'm saying? Can't play football no more. So, all right, you got an opportunity to still be great. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people, you have your, your life like, this is where I'm going. And then something happens and then... Yeah, the road, it's, it's the, road not is, easy to, the road to success is never as straight as we would like for it to be. It never is, man. And and sometimes, you know, a lot of people will put all their eggs in one basket. And when that plan don't go through, it's hard to pick your ass back up off the ground and be like, all right, let me dust this off. And just and let me find out that other way. Because this isn't it. You're still breathing. You're still living. So there's still something, there's still for, something you. for you. What is that thing? So you got to find out. So I have a question. Thing. I mean, does this, does this go along with you saying a drummer with a purpose? Absolutely, absolutely. I got um, my youngest sister, her name is Nia, is one of the principals of Kwanzaa. So I have purpose tattooed right here. And that, that, that tattoo, I got that tattoo like eight years ago. And I never kind of, you feel what I'm saying, never put it together. And I got Cheo right here. Got on the no, same time. No. Never really realized what happened. And it's like, oh snap, you feel what I'm saying, put it together. So drumming is definitely my purpose. I realize that it's just a different feeling. It's just a gift that I have. I, I feel something completely different drumming, and when people come up to me after a show or after church or whatever and be like, man, yo, I really felt something with your drumming, like, you need wow, to stick with this, like, that's this good. is what you're supposed to be doing, you feel what I'm saying? So sometimes God will send people your way to give you that little extra affirmation, you feel what I'm saying? You know, and it's crazy you said that because, you know, I, I went to an event once at Willie Patterson University, mm -hmm. and I was just hosting, like, another event that I'm hosting, and then I was on the mic. And uh, one of the uh, advisors from the school, never seen this lady, never spoke to this lady. I don't, to be honest, I don't even remember this lady. Right. If, you, if I see her face, I can point her out. Mm -hmm. And she told me, I don't know what you're doing or what you're studying, but you need to go into radio. <laughs> and I took it as like... What, like she yeah, just talking yeah, like... She's just yeah. talking like, you uh -huh. know what I mean? I'm in radio. Like, you understand what I'm trying to say? Right. So, you know, I, I feel like sometimes we bump into these people who kind of just have like these right. messages for us. And, and it's dope to be able to recognize it. Because you want to know what? That wasn't the first time somebody told you that. Because I know when I finally listened and said, you know what, let me take this drum seriously, that wasn't the first time. <laughs> you already got it down. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That wasn't the first time. <laughs> All right, so you're also a producer. I produce a couple things, you know. I'm, I'm getting on that. Uh, I got told that um, with my drumming ear and, like, my whole, like, my dad had me growing up in, like, a lot of old school, like, jazz and like p-funk and all that type stuff so i'm like you know i'm 32 but some of my favorite music is you would think i was like 45 <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> so my sound and what i try to do like my snares is different i don't really like sampling too much i like to just saturate myself in some music and then try to really take my idea from that you know what i'm saying like sampling is cool but that's not something I want to do. Because Why is that? Because I feel like if you pay a homage to an artist who did it before, like, say Bootsy Cotton, he got some dope shit. Okay. Part of me, bass lines. Now, I know you do, you want to Oh, yeah, part of me. Part of me, part of me, mama, if you're watching this, my bad. Yeah, but <laughs> Bootsy is dope as hell. So if uh, Bootsy, you know, he got some bass lines, so boom. I wouldn't sample that bass line necessarily per se, but I would take, like, two notes from that. And then I would maybe go like outside the box and try to find something like James Brown. Now, people don't know that Bootsy used to play bass for James Brown back okay. in the day before he started going off and doing anything with George Clinton, you feel what I'm saying? So I would try to take something from that era and then blend that shit together to try to make like this hybrid baby, you feel what I'm saying? Because you can't do what other motherfuckers did. They already did. Exactly. So with me and producing and my beats and everything I'm trying to do, I'm trying to think like, all right, what did they do, but what can I do that's different from them? That's going to set me apart. You feel what I'm saying? So when they hear a beat from Chael, they going to know from the rip, like, ooh, like, this is fire. Damn, like, that boy did that. You feel what I'm saying? Like, hear them snares, how you put that shit together? Damn, how the hell did he blend, uh, damn it, Luther Vandross with damn Leanne Rhymes? Like, how the hell did he put it How do he put it together? But I'm going to figure out a way. It's definitely gonna happen. So my boy, my big homie Manny D. Rosa, you feel what I'm saying? He's 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 showing me my and he's 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 real dope, man. 
Shout out to Manny D over there at Jam 3 Productions, man. That's my brother right there. All right, perfect. Um, you, you spoke uh, previously about um, Tough TNT. Mm -hmm. How did you become part of Tough TNT? You know, what does Tough TNT stand for? Tough ENT stands for too unique for fuckery or to be G-rated too unique for foolery. You feel what I'm saying? Okay, explain me both ends and how do you... I mean, <laughs> how do you become part of it too? Well, my homie 12, that's uh, we're co-founders, you feel what I'm saying, with the whole thing. He um he called me up, told me that he wanted me to go on some shows and do some things with it, see how it would go. We started doing SOBs, we did yacht parties, we did uh, Cafe Soleil in Jersey City, we done did like so many, we did over 100 shows. We was like, you know, we got something going. We was getting phone calls from a few people. You feel what I'm saying? Um, still got some things in the works. And he was just like, bro, he was like, just what you have with you beyond the drumming. He was like, I need you on the team. He was like, your work ethic, your, your personality, what you come with. Like, yeah, he was like, I need you to build this, you know what I mean, to help build this brand. So it's dope. It's like we're an entertainment label. It's like we're able to push ourselves, but when we do different shows and showcases, we also try to give other dope artists an opportunity to shine and everything like that. So it's it's a real dope thing. We're still building it, and it's and it's growing. We've grown. We have a team. We have a um another base in uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. So we branch out. The expansion out. is there. Yeah, the expansion is definitely definitely there. So we're growing. We're building. We just don't want to do anything premature, although not sit on anything too long. That is that, that's great. Yeah. Now, um, let's start by I know you you were working with twelve. Um, there was a revamping going on of the project. Yeah. What, speak a bit more about that and how that worked. Well, we had the um the drugs project. We shot the video for that out in Springfield, Mass. Three days. That was real dope. We had some beautiful ladies come out. We shot that. We did a uh, video release at SOBs. That was sold out. That was that was amazing. Um, twelve is. You'll get to meet him. He's like, a, he's, a, he's, 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 he'll ha <laughs> <laughs> because he's never satisfied, bro. Like, it's, it's, and I love him for that. Like, it, we could kill a show and we'll go, like, we'll be at his house chilling, whatever, smoking hookah. And he'd be like, yo, chill. You see that part right there? I'm like, yeah, I saw that. He'd be like, we gotta do better on that. I'm like, well, bro, you saw everybody's day. I don't care. We gotta do that. Perfectionist in him. Right. So when it came to the music, he got new stuff he's coming out with Cobain. Um, but he wanted to pull back some of the music he did. He wanted to remaster it, you feel what I'm saying? He wanted to just put like a, you know, because the, the way the music game goes, every, it, it changes so fast. So it was like, okay, we did this a year, year and a half ago. We got a good buzz, but we didn't really push it out there. So now we're about to really punch it. So let's kind of make it more, you feel what I'm saying? Let's tweak the sound a little bit, make it sound like 2018, and then let's really punch them in the head with it. Because when we hit them with it, they ain't going to have no choice but to mess with it. No choice at all. All right. So now let's speak your very motivation. So they say. No, no, no. You are. <laughs> so what? what is it that, that drives you to like kind of like make all these motivational posts and like, you know, just kind of like be that inspiration in somebody's day? Um, I guess it's just me, man. I'm always, I'm always about energy. I'm always about seeing the next person win. I'm always about just finding the silver lining. It's always about positivity. So, you know, it, it's crazy because it started out, I was just doing it, like just to do it, you feel what I'm saying? And then I would get different comments. People were like, yo, I really needed that. Um, people would like DM me, hit me in my inbox, like, yo, I mean, people I knew, people I didn't know, in the, in the States, overseas, like... How's, how's, what's that feeling, you know, you just have random people just kind of acknowledge you for what you're saying? It's fulfilling, and it kind of tells me that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm walking in my purpose, which is one of my hashtags. It really makes me feel like I'm doing that, because being able to touch someone else and make them feel like they can keep going and make them feel like they got a reason to keep doing what they're doing. Like, that's indescribable, man. You feel what I'm saying? That's that's something you can't put a price on. You can't really, you don't do it for that purpose. But knowing that that's what comes out of it, man, it's, it's real cool. You know, when people hit me up and be like, yo, man, I was stressed out. You know, I was going through this with my wife. I was about to whatever, whatever. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's people going through some stuff out there, man. For like, sure, for sure. People are really going through things out there. And I think sometimes we take stuff for granted. You know, like, my ability to wake up every day and just be happy to be alive. 
a lot of people don't have that. So, and they don't have somebody around them like that. So if I could shoot a video on Instagram for 60 seconds just to give that to them, I mean, I'm going to do that. If I'm just out chilling and I'm on a snap and I'm like, hey, chill here, you know, just be good. Keep, you know, it's, just keep going. Whatever you think ain't going to work, it's going to work. You feel what I'm saying? Just stick with it. And a lot of times I'm talking to myself and people don't even know that, man, because, I mean, I got my own goals and aspirations and things I'm trying to achieve, so it's not always easy. You feel what I'm saying? You might see me on camera always perking anything, but sometimes I need that video. You feel what I'm saying? Sometimes I'll shoot a video and just, just to, yeah, and just to play it back. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and, 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 and if in the process, I find and discover that I just naturally have something. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody's like, oh, you got this. This can be marketed. That's cool, but that's corny if I want to turn up all of a sudden because people it's want not, to pay it's me. It's not natural. Me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not that. And then eventually I'm going to lose the, the fire and desire for it. So I'm going to keep this shit as organic as I can. And that's just the way I, I've been. That's always the way I'm going to be. Like, Ever since I was in high school, I used to be like, I am who I am, and I don't give a damn. Like, <laughs> this is what you get this is the package. Yeah, you know, like you the rap saying, like, oh, it well. is what it is. You feel what I'm saying? And I mean, that's me. I mean, ask my family. I'm the. You, I mean, party ain't lit till I get there. You feel what I'm saying? Like, y'all know me as security yeah. at Vessel. Yeah. Shout out to Kuma. You feel what I'm saying? But y'all know me as a security. Nah, me outside of the the, the the Batman top flight security suit. Let me tell you, man. I love life. I love to have fun. I'm a big kid at heart, man. I'm man. You you just don't understand, man. I mean, it's life is good, man. You're alive, and that's coming from somebody who almost died. That's coming from somebody who's been in the streets. I've been I've been through some things. You feel what I'm saying? So, for me to be here and know that I've lost people that have died before me, and even people that have died, you know, like that were older than me, but put something in me that kind of made me the way I am. It's like you know, I got to keep going for y'all. You feel what I'm saying? Like. So you said that you almost died. Can you like tell me a bit more about that? Like, um, it was crazy. After a show, um, I was with my um with my lady, and I was uh, talking to her. It's crazy. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I was opening my door. I was right on Twenty First Ave in Patterson. I was opening the door to my truck, and I was talking to her. And I just happened to lean in because I was looking for something. At the moment I linked in, something just flew by me. I was like, what the f Yo, my bag spun me around. I look, there's a car swerving, speeding down towards the McDonald's on market. My nigga, I had a, a Chevy Tahoe, like the old school joint, that big, I okay. shot you feel what I'm saying? My nigga, the whole door was bent back, you feel what I'm saying? Like, bent back. Like, there was no pulling that shit forward, like that shit was all wow. fucked up. Like, my nigga, if I hadn't a link in at that gone. moment, that car would have took me head on. My nigga, the next day, came out the, the Louis, the lick store owner, like, yo, what happened to your truck? The, 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 the people on the corner, they had some surveillance cameras, so I'm like, yo, somebody hit my truck last night, can I check the cameras, boom, boom, boom. Yo, my nigga, they showed me the video, they put it on a DVD for me, emailed it to me and shit. The car, now that's a big truck, you know, the yeah. shape, that's a heavy truck. The car, the little car was going so fast that when it hit the door, the whole truck shook. Like, that's how fast that car, like, if my, like, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah listen, I think, I, know, there's, I, think, I feel like we always have, like, these lifetime moments where kind of, you know, life just kind of flashes in front of our eyes. Yeah. And we don't get to kind of, like, see it, you know, until we kind of just sit back and kind of breathe and take yeah. it in as to, like, you know, what's... You get to reflect, man, and and then it's like when you have a near death experience, it's like I right, bet, like you're like woo, like it's the adrenaline. You're like woo, we good, we good. But it's not until like a couple of days later when you really sit back and be like, yo, like how how many days does it take to bury somebody? Three to five days. So you can be like, man, they could be playing my funeral. <laughs> at this moment, yeah, at, at, this, at this moment, you feel what I'm saying? That's when you really put things in perspective, and then you gotta reflect. Like, and I had to ask myself, like, yo, if you would have died right then and there, would you be satisfied with life? Did you do everything that you could have did? Or, like, at that moment, were you doing everything that you could have to make sure that you won the most? The answer was no. That was an honest moment I had to have with myself. I said, all right, well, we ain't gonna let that shit happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So. 
you know, talking about near death and you know your your motivation. There's, you have a quote that says, "Faith without work is dead." What does that mean, and you know, what's the message behind that? It's it's, it's biblical, man. My mom, she used to she used to, you know, have me reading my word and reading the Bible. And used to have me on things, and it's certain scriptures. Like my favorite scripture is, "No weapon formed against me shall prosper." Isaiah fifty four seventeen. That's tatted on me right here. You feel what I'm saying? Faith with faith without works is dead. I mean, that's. It's so self-explanatory, people don't even get it. They think it's deep, but it really isn't. It just really means you can have all the ideas in the world, all the wants. You can be like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm gonna be I believe in myself. But if you're not out there busting your ass, then it's not going to reap no benefits. What you, you reap what you sow. So what, you, what, 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 what do you reap from, from, from hope and aspirations? Honestly, like, you, everybody is hopeful. Everybody has, everybody, you know, preaches up the positivity thing, which I do, but behind that, I'm also telling people, like, you got to go get it. You got to sit back. You got to either put a plan in play, whatever plan you have in play that's not working, you need to figure that out, revamp that thing, and put it back out there. You know what I'm saying? Don't give up on yourself. Don't do that. You're always going to be a winner. But if you got all this faith in yourself and you got this great idea, this business you want to own, this great level of entrepreneurship you want to get to, but if you're not out there putting in the research, putting in the time, saving up that bread, because nowadays anything you want to do, you got to understand, let me tell you something, if you, if you don't invest in yourself, you're playing yourself. You can't be out there, you can't be telling people, oh, I do this, you should, don't start a GoFundMe if you ain't got a GoFundMe for yourself. And I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you ain't got a little piggy bank, if you ain't got a water bottle that you dropping some coins in that you can just snatch up and go, you play, like, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, like, don't come to me. Cause I ain't got it. I, I, ain't got it. I ain't got it. I ain't got it. I ain't got it. You feel what I'm saying? So that's really what that means. Like, to anybody out there, if you if you out there saying that you're going to be great, you saying that you're going to do something, you have a goal that you want to obtain and achieve, that's fine and dandy. But trust and believe, you got to go out there and get it. You got to go out there and get it. You got to put in that effort. You got to go research whatever it is, whatever field it is that you're going into. You got to research that data. You got to be willing to put in that, them hours. You can't go to work for 8, 10, 12 hours to bust your ass for somebody that if you couldn't come into work tomorrow, they wouldn't care. If you drop dead tomorrow, they will replace you. So you got to put your own time and effort into your own dreams. That's facts. That is a very true statement. But since you're a drummer, <laughs> right? I purposely, I, this, 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 is, this is on purposely, on right? Purposely. It is on purposely. Purposely is not a word, ladies and gentlemen, but it is today. Today it is, I made it up. Um, <laughs> so, I wasn't I wasn't going to tell you this to bring your drums because, you, you know, you got your drums, you know you know how to use your drums. Right, yes. Exactly, so since you're a percussionist, we're going to give you some random items, you know, and, and we're going to make it happen. So, can I get a cadena, please? A cadena? Yeah. And you know, so like, I'm Dominican as shit, right? So right. every once I had one of those calderas from VR, right? Right. So we're gonna give you this. Okay. Right? <laughs> we're gonna give you this. Okay. Right? Right. Now, pasame la cubeta de donde está la pelota, right? So, you got 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. You can do whatever you want with this one in one spoon. <laughs> right? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. You got 20 seconds. After those 20 seconds, I'm going to add another item, and I'm going to give you another spoon. <laughs> All right? What are we doing? All right? So, whenever you're ready, look, I'm, look, I'm going to start timing. Okay. okay. You know, I don't want you know, to give you too much time, you know? Right. This is interesting. Right? I haven't done this since I was a kid. Okay. This is fun. This is fun. Yeah. All right, here we go. You ready? All right. 20 seconds. And ready. <laughs> Set. And go. This is these little ass spoons you got me playing with. Here you go. Whose spoons are these? These are my spoons. These are what I eat with. Toddler, this toddler spoon. Fisher Price spoons. They got me. I'll give you, I'll give you my attack. Whenever you're ready. 
Find right. your sounds. Ouch. Find your sounds. <laughs> you know, find the purpose. Yeah. Find right. the purpose. Hey, let me know what you ready. Alright. You think you ready? I guess. You sure? <laughs> yeah. This is so disrespectful to the homies who really do this in the subway and kill this shit every day. Yo. I feel like I'm I'm sorry, I'm I'm sorry. This is not what I do. Ready? Yeah. Set? Yeah. Go. Of the drummer here representing Tough ENT. Man, I just had a great time on this couch with my boy Negro, man. Uh, man, keep following this brother. He's going to keep doing great things. And keep following me. You can always follow me on Chael underscore the underscore drummer. You know what I mean? That's pretty much everything I got. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, all that. That's how you're going to follow me. Snapchat, J O M E L 626. You know what I mean? I'm a fun guy. Come follow me. You are now plugged in with Chael the drummer.